Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. It's Eva from Bohemian Crafting and today I'm coming with a small idea for those who like to create journals and who getting stuck on how to name your journals. So here I do have a few ideas and uh, this will be like freebies for you. You can download it. Link will be down below uh, if you would like to use these names and create your own book plates for your journals. First, I need to create some kind of book cover, which I don't have right now. I am going to use this Serali box uh, for that book cover. Just gonna open it and cut it in the size I want. Uh, I would like to create kind of like the traveler's journal or a midori size journal, journal cover only this time. So I'm gonna cut it to the size eight and a half on the how tall that book cover will be and here I'm gonna cut the sides five then spine I guess uh, one inch and then five again so first I'm gonna cut these sides of that box I'm gonna use my paper guillotine if you don't have paper guillotine use a knife and ruler and cut these off now I'm gonna measure from one straight side uh, down there eight and a half inches and I'm gonna cut that rest so eight and a half is here and here I'm gonna use my ruler and knife and cut this off So I do have this size eight and a half. Now I need to create that uh, front and back of my cover. You can use this side of your Serali box like a spine of your book. I don't wanna have this big spine. So I'm gonna try to find the middle and fold it in the middle to find the middle of that uh, small, small spine of the box. I'm gonna fold this together and press it here. So here I do have a middle of this part of the box, which will be the spine of my book. And from that middle, I'm going to measure half inch on one side, half inch on other side, which will give me, I'm going to make a mark. Here you can see if you are cutting with knife and you have wooden ruler <laughs> how it can end up so i do have half inch on one side and half inch on that opposite side from the middle of the box side and i'm gonna fold this over the edge of my ruler and that will give me the spine of, of my book cover here on one side and here where I do have those other marks lift it up and I'm using here bone folder to make it a nice and crispy you can use ruler or uh, the other side of your of your scissors to a little bit fold it up then fold your cover this way where is ah here is it this way where you can see and make sure you can see the spine you just created And burnish here that line is the middle so on that opposite side make sure these sides are matching this one and this one oh. and burnish or with your scissors burnish 
So here I will have new spine of my book. That rest I don't mind because I will wrap it to the papers and uh, it kind of get invisible. So from this side I'm gonna measure five inches. From this side I'm gonna measure five inches and I'm gonna cut that rest off. Five inches from here. And five inches from that. I think I'm gonna use my pencil a little bit, make visible my fault. And as I said, it will be covered with paper, so I don't mind that there is now some drawing. And I'm gonna cut this one off and this one off. I do have base for my book cover. I'm gonna take some old paper. This paper came with some Amazon order I received and I'm always saving those papers because they are brilliant to use for creating book, book covers. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a glue and glue from both sides this brown paper from this side and from that opposite side as well. So I do have my brown paper from one side. I'm gonna fold it over the edges. Oh, the other side. I'm gonna fold it over the edges and glue this down. And I'm making this one a very easy way because uh, I would like to get vintage look. So here I don't have to be exactly because I will cut the corners anyway. To make them look more worn. I'm gonna cut a little bit those top corners now. Just a small amount. Really very small amount from those corners. I wanna have kind of vintage look. And I'm gonna use my bone folder. Uh, because this is Serali box and I don't trust the long time, long time keep the, the shape or keep the, you know, keep, keep all together. So I'm going to reinforce my Serali box with a fabric. That fabric will also make vintage look of my junk journal or not junk journal, junk journal cover. So this is the spine I will have here. I'm going to use the cheesecloth. I've got here this beautiful 90 grade uh, cheesecloth. Uh, link will be down below where from uh, I've got it. It's uh, I found it on Amazon and it's brilliant. So I'm using this. I'm going to put a glue here on all over of this side. And glue the cheesecloth on my cover from here. So I do have that cheesecloth here. Uh, I left a little bit all around uh, of my base for that cover. I'm going to use my glue stick again. Put a lot of glue here. Nice coat of glue here on this side. And put there that brown paper again. And then I will cut it. I'll show you how. This is not professional. Nothing uh, too hard to do. There is lots of beautiful videos how you can make a vintage looking uh, book cover. I will link for you one channel which is uh, from professional bookbinders. They are amazing. I learned from them a lot. So I will put link down below. This is cover which I hope anyone can do. Something like ratatouille. <laughs> anyone can cook if you want. So this, it's cover that anyone can do if you want. And I'm going to place here the paper. And press it. So I do have paper from the opposite side as well. 
I think I didn't press it properly. Look at me. Make sure you will make your paper nice and smooth and flat. I'm going to leave it on this side. As you can see, I left a little bit of paper all around. And I'm going to color it this side with black, kind of like blackish coloring. I'm going to use, this is shoe wax, liquid shoe wax for leather shoes. You can buy different types of shoe wax. I've got these two. And to both of them, I added, not to this one, this is color which you get if you do have just shoe wax. And this is color I'm going to show you, which you get if you will add inside a little bit of black acrylic paint and mix it well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just color my piece here. So I do have my painting done and dry already. I'm going to take my scissors and with the scissors I'm going to cut around that base. I'm going to keep about... Not even one millimeter. It's just a very, very slight gap. And as you can see on a few places, I kind of forgot to paint it, but I don't mind at all. I'm going to take this uh, nail. Yeah, see? My painting. Take gloves when you are painting. I need to clean up my nails. So with this uh, nail file, I'm going to sand the edges. Uh, this you can do once everything is totally dry. If you will use the nail file on the wet paper, it will just roll it. It will doesn't have perfect effect. But uh, once you have dry your paper and you will go very lightly over your painting on those edges, It will automatically create beautiful vintage look if you want to do that vintage look. Over the edges here as well. Just very lightly. Don't be harsh on your on your book. Don't be too much hard on it. Just very carefully. make one effect like this so you do have that vintage base uh, I'm going to add here on those edges also kind of like reinforcing pieces. So from that leftover from Serali pieces, I think uh, I want to have it in brown color. So I can either use uh, again that wax, shoe wax, or here. I'm going to use mix of Distress Inks. This is tea dyed color, Distress Ink from Ranger. And this is a ground espresso. Distress ink from Ranger, and I'm gonna mix them on this card just like this. And cut two strips. How long is this one? This is two and a half nearly. That will be perfect by one inch. Two strips. We've got my two strips. I'm gonna fold it half, both of them. And both of them, these edges, I'm gonna cut just that, that corner, just a very slightly cut of the corners that will make it a little bit more vintage. I'm going to do this one on both of them and to make sure I will don't see this white edge on my book cover I'm going to use again uh, one of these inks and just ink the edges so 
So here I'm using my amazing distress tool. This is, by the way, again on the nails. This is that buffering sponge or um, cube. I'm using it for seven years, I guess, but it's still same. And I love it for my inking. So I do have my pieces on the edges of the spine. So now I'm going to glue it. Uh, I'm going to use Uhu glue because it's holding much, much better. I used one inch uh, size here because the spine of my book is one inch. That's why I used the one inch measurement for this strip. I'm going to add Uhu glue on my strip and glue it on the edges from here and from here. So I do have uh, glued those edges. I'm going to punch the holes and fix the eyelets. So I do have fixed those eyelets. I've got here elastic um, cord. And I'm going to fit that the elastic cord. I'm going to go from outside, inside, through the opposite side, and all around. And make a knot. That way my book cover is done. And I just small jump in because I forgot to say, uh, if you don't have the tool for fixing eyelets and you don't have eyelets, you can always uh, grab some elastic band or if you don't have elastic band, you can grab just some ribbon, some maybe yarn, knitting yarn and just wrap it around and make a knot on your string or the yarn or ribbon anything or lace anything you will use just wrap it around the spine and then you can slide the papers behind so that way you can add the holders for your papers to your journal without a tool that's what i wanted to say and here i do have a few book plates uh, which is coming now so now we're finally going to move to make our book plate i've got here that sheet i've got my coffee done and uh, Hopefully we will create some uh, few types of book plates. So first, it's super easy. I'm going to cut these pieces on the pieces. So I do have my words here and I'm going to start probably with those field notes. So just super easy. Because I'm making that in vintage style, I'm going to cut a little bit of those corners again to make it look worn. Uh, I don't like those sharp corners. Then I will use Distress Ink and the same I used for these sides, which is uh, tea dyed and ground espresso. And I will distress it uh, just slightly. I don't want to make, make it too dark. Just give it a little bit of shade on the edges. So first a little bit with the tea dye. And then ground espresso. Maybe it's too dark. It's good to have on the hand uh, wipes, wet wipes, because distress inks can be uh, kind of wiped off. They are reacting with water, with, you know, with a liquid. So this way, and then I will glue it on my uh, cover and that will be done. That's the most easy book plate you can create. But we're going to create a few more. So for next ones, I'm going to take this uh, leftover from my packing paper. I prepared a few of these labels and I'm going to glue them down. I distress them a little bit. So this one I'm going to glue in this rectangle shape. On my paper. This one I think I'm gonna use the corner punch and I'm gonna punch those corners to make them a little bit softer and just distress the edges it, it looks more more finished on this one I'm gonna cut the corners across and create kind of like a label style
and this I'm gonna cut in the kind of like a circle way I'm gonna cut them off and I'm gonna leave small part of that brown paper around my labels so your uh, labels or book plates will look like this uh, simple and easy and if we will place it on the journal it will look really cute and you can continue with this you can take uh, your pencil and I think I'm gonna go here yeah you can take your pencil and with the pencil you can create fake stitching all around and create label or your book plate like this or you can take your sewing machine so if you do like sewing you can sew all around some uh, nice stitching if you want to go a little bit more uh, take your sewing machine take a leftover of your cheesecloth and sew the cheesecloth using your sewing machine under your label on under your book plate and you can also add both those stitching fake stitching and proper stitching from your machine and make it even more interesting more artistic just play with the supplies you've got if you do have some supplies if you don't this will be enough it will look amazing if you do have some another you know craft supplies like those brats you can add them to the side I hope I'm gonna be even I'm gonna do it quite easy way <laughs> gonna fold my label if you don't wanna see the fold I will need to do it this way to see where is my label gonna fold those sides and to make it even I'm gonna just poke the hole through the bow there is a risk you will have fold in the middle so if you don't wanna do it this way just take your ruler and measure I don't mind that there will be some small fold and I'm gonna put those brats here and here and fix them and I do have this book plate uh, another way how to do how to create cute uh, book plates is to use your dice if you do have die cutting machine and you do have some dice maybe you can find that some shape like is this one this is from collection from Kanban uh, toppers nesting label dots die set it was called here uh, I don't have a link for this one because I've got these dies for a very long time and those link doesn't work anymore but I will put uh, names underneath if you want to check it out if these dies are uh, some somewhere in your area but as I said I do have them for a very long time so maybe only on eBay when somebody it's clearing out craft room maybe this is from Sizzix and I will put a number as well it, it was from one collection and there was also tabs I think and I will need my other glasses my reading glasses but I think it's 659108 I will have a look one more time with my reading glasses and write down the name down below this unfortunately doesn't have any name and I don't remember where from I've got it I've got it for more for more than five years and I really don't remember where from I've got it but uh, it's many companies who are making these dies lately so you can definitely find some uh, on internet and then just choose What you wanna put there and I think here I will really like this one so 
So glued your names of the journal on those labels, add their eyelets. Here I punched two holes and I added their eyelets. And this way you can fix it to your journal. I haven't fixed them yet. I just slide it to, to those holes. If I want to fix it to my cover, I will open the cover, make a position of the label I want to use. So maybe somewhere here, I will take a pencil, make a mark where the holes I will be there. Then I will punch the holes through to that cover and then I will fix those eyelets through the label and the book cover as well. So I haven't fixed them yet, but I just wanted to show you how beautiful these book plates will look like, looks like with those uh, metal eyelets. Uh, or you can do kind of like <coughs> collage or <laughs> building up. I glued the names on those inside cuts from these two labels from Sizzix. I distressed all of it uh, using ground espresso distress ink. This one on these labels, I use it just lightly. And on these frames, I was quite heavy. I did uh, use that ink uh, really well. And now I can use uh, this gold pigment ink <laughs> pigment ink marker. I forgot the name of that. And I can add a little bit of gold on that frame using this marker if I will want so. And make it look like a vintage gold label. Or I can use... This is a wonderful thing. I love these waxes. Uh, this is from Prima Marketing Opal Magic Wax. And this one is vintage silk. And when you are editing these on your dice or on your art, it makes different types of shades on the top, uh, that metallic shade. And this one, it's kind of like a goldish, that uh, vintage gold. And it's really beautiful. I love that, uh, that wax. You just wipe it all over. You can take a cloth and wipe it off where you don't need it. So to play with it a little bit. And you can create your gold, gold frame for your... Uh, die and if you don't have this maybe you want to have a rusty effect then I do have here a solution for you I've got a mix of dry colors you can buy powdered colors uh, in bottles they are mostly for making those small models like airplanes uh, trains so there is a mix of colors, uh, weathering powders, it's called, uh, and plus, oh, uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon is the right English word. Cinnamon spice. It smells beautiful and it makes amazing rusty effect. So I'm just going to add the glue on my label. Oops, yeah. And on my table, then I can just dip it to my mix here. The best way how you can do it is to have gloves on your hands and maybe some brush. But I like to kind of smush, 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 smush it on my, uh, on the pieces I'm creating. And using a glue to make that rusty effect even more visible, even more real. And let it dry. Once it's dry, just glue it around your name of the, of the journal. Uh, you can do shaped labels even if you don't have dies. Uh, you just need to take a pencil, some kind of paper. I'm going to take this cardstock and I'm going to cut a piece. I think that big. I'm going to fold it half. Then 
draw half of my future label so I'm gonna draw this one and maybe I wanna have there some kind of that half circle on the end hopefully <laughs> it's even if not that will be more whimsical so this will be half of my shape I'm gonna cut it off And of course more work you will put into it more beautiful it will be so that will be shape of my future label I'm gonna place it on my cardstock and I'm gonna draw all all around so draw your shape then cut it with your scissors and you do have your label your unique label because you will draw your unique pattern and then continue same way like I did before you can distress it you can color it with any kind of colors you have around you can use markers you can use only cinnamon for that rusty effect that works as well I did use it many times before and it works beautifully so with your unique shape just create your label if you want to make it like <clears throat> a frame inside then I will suggest to use your template cut some window inside then draw it to your shape and with a knife cut it off draw the shape of your <clears throat> of your window and with a knife cut it off like this then just use some color color it I'm gonna make heavy coat and take your label put the glue on your frame and place this one inside and then let it dry once it's dry and holding well take your scissors and cut it around and you will have your beautiful your beautiful label you can punch the holes in those oh, half circles put their eyelets or you can just poke the hole and put there those brats to put there uh, to give a small amount of metal <laughs> in your book plate and you can continue so on you can add there the cheesecloth underneath and make it even more interesting so from this you can go and uh, also so maybe you want to have uh, have it the name of your journal a little bit more shiny you can use a gel pen and uh, I've got here this gold one I will put link down below I found it on Amazon and they are really beautiful they are very rich with the color so you can draw on your print and decorate it with this gel pen and create a beautifully golden written name I hope you can see or if you are not <coughs> strong with a pen there is so many techniques how you can add the gold we've got here one for you which I learned from Jennifer McGuire she is amazing card maker and I love her channel I learned so many so many techniques from her and this is one of them uh, it is using uh, your laser print and, and you don't have to have colorful laser printer you can have monochrome laser printer and it will work well if you do have laser print like I do have here you just need one of these foils these are uh, foils which are reacting reacting with heat and then you will need laminator I've got here my laminator I have cut a piece of that gold 
foil and I do have here a journal sign so I'm gonna place that foil with the gold on on the top because that gold I want to see and because it's small piece and it can get lost <laughs> in my laminator I'm gonna place it to the scratchman paper or baking paper and I'm gonna slide it to my laminator So with this laminating technique you will get a really beautiful effect. If you do have uh, if you do have laser printer, you don't have to have a laminator, you can have uh, iron and it works exactly the same on the laser printer. You just need iron or put on higher heat, highest heat, you will need baking paper or parchment paper. And it works with those foils as well. It does work with a hair straightener with this. But because uh, it's hard to put same pressure on all that piece, it maybe will be not exactly on all uh, spots. Maybe there will be some pieces not foiled properly. So normal iron, it's the better for this, uh, this technique. And here is my small collection or what I created now and I'm gonna continue probably with all those other other letters uh, here I want to show you I just uh, glue the card with the foilet uh, name of the journal on that die card then I used black ink I'm gonna use this one so I glue it on that die cut I used black ink and with black ink I went all over of that space and then I glued around I glued it on the paper and I glued around this frame so it makes this type of uh, book plate here to make it it's exactly the same I just glued it on this die they, then I went with black ink all over you can see that there is one card underneath and that other card here. So I went with black ink all over. Uh, it's good, uh, this foiling, it's perfect for uh, when you are using distress inks because it's not taking distress inks. So it's much more easy to color it all around and not that, that writing. And then I just use my nail uh, file to distress a little bit those edges to make it more, more vintage. And what I <laughs> just tried... On this frame, it's golden. <laughs> I try to put uh, this tacky glue on on my frame, and then I just place it on this foil and went it through my laminator, and it did make that foiling effect. So you don't have to use a print. I mean laser print you can use glue or some you know glue pen or something like that you can also use uh, you don't need to have their print if you have nice writing uh, and if you do have that it does have name uh, it's using for burning uh, images into the wood the pen it does have a name and I, unfortunately I forgot right now the name of that uh, hot tip pen <laughs> I will google it and I will put link down below what I mean so you can use that hot pen <laughs> to draw uh, your writing <clears throat> so these are my journal uh, journal book plates here I use just red color on that frame around so you can play with those words I'm gonna put the link down below this is my sharing for today I hope you did enjoy it I hope you found some inspiration Go to have a look what you've got all, all around and you can create your amazing journal cover with some amazing journal book plate. Do not think it just because you don't have proper tools or the tools like I do have that you can't do amazing things. You can create amazing journals and beautiful books. So this is my sharing for today. Thank you so, so much for sharing your time with me. Thank you so much for visiting me. Have a beautiful day. Take care about yourself and I will see you soon. Bye.